Okay, thank you very much, Shireen. Um, so give us some background. David, give us some background on Baldwin End. Sure. Uh, we are six years old, uh, started in the, just the depths of the awful economy and uh, That's the best time to start a company. It was actually, because there was nowhere to go but up. And we had, <laughs> we had nothing to lose. But uh, I decided I wanted to start the agency when the economy was rocking. And then um, about a year later, I, we opened the doors and it was, everything had changed. So. Okay, and now how many people are you right now? 35. 35, okay. Uh, George, PMG. Get yeah, back. so we started about a year behind David. We're about five years old. We have about 65 people right now, uh, based in Fort Worth, and then we have an office in New York. Okay. Um, so you both sort of, you know, we heard from Razorfish and Digitas, really big agencies. What, what do you see, David, um, as the sort of advantage of being a small agency? Well, uh, you know, we have, an, we have an ampersand in our name for a reason. Okay. Um, that is not just to be clever. Um, and the original idea of the company, when I looked at the sort of landscape of, of what was happening, was agencies love to say they can do everything, but mm -hmm. I w would stand in front of clients and say I could do everything and know that we couldn't do everything and that we had to figure it out. So um, what, what we did was say, well, how do we now build a world-class creative company but partner with people to do the things that we don't do? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's how we've built the company. So what is the core, you know, thing that, that your agency... Sure. So we refer to ourselves as a, a hybrid digital advertising branding mo mobile social media thingy in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, <laughs> and the kind of founding principle is... That's one word, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it is, I think, really important to try to say what you are. And yeah, no, I agree. We, again, one of the founding principles was how do we create an agency for the next 20 years, not the agency of the last 20 years? And, um, you know, I, I have a... I've, I've been in the business longer than the fax machine. So just to give a little perspective to everybody, um, I've seen technologies come and go. That was a big deal at one time. The fax machine? The fax machine was a big deal. And, um, and so I, my perspective is, you know, I, I kind of started during the tail end of the Mad Men era from the, from the 60s, and the people that first hired me were those guys, but 30 years later. Yeah. And um, so I, it, we, I, I think our core is narrative storytelling, great at branding, um, we do product development, we do brand development, we do uh, strategy only engagements, we do a little bit of everything, but kind of based around what I would call new traditional, um, which is, you know, everything's kind of melding together. Mm -hmm. We don't make the distinctions of, we're a digital agency, Ev everything we do has digital um, applicability, even when it's a print ad. Yeah. So. Okay. George, what about you? What's the main thing that you guys do? I think for us, the core has always been, I mean, I've started in the digital space in 2003, 2004, where digital was just starting, and it was just, you know, the big G word, like what's happening with digital and where things are going. And so our core, core is really media buying, media strategy execution. We mostly work with big brands, and so we try to touch everything digital outside of development. So we do uh, strategy, we do execution, we do analytics, and, and, and buying. Mm -hmm. so. How do you compete with the, the vast resources of the large agencies? You know, it's interesting. I think uh, f for us, one of the key differentiators is that even though we are young as an agency, a lot, over 50% of our staff are people who have been at big agencies for the last 10, 15 years doing digital advertising. So I believe our knowledge is a little bit better. I think we can move faster. We can innovate and iterate a little bit faster. With, with PMG, one of the things we are proud of, we can constantly test new ideas and new execution, where with a big holding companies, you have to go through the giant approval process. So I feel like we can be a little more agile and be able to move a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. David. What's the advantage of being in, in Raleigh versus uh, New York City? I don't think there is cost one. Cost of living. Yeah, cost of living. <laughs> I, I don't really think there is one. There is I think one. it's, I really don't. I, I think <laughs> you, you have to be in charge of your own destiny. And so we are, um, we are judged by the work that we do. That's, that's the advantage is that I can hold a culture together, I think, that's pretty different. But what about, what so. about attracting talent? I mean, is, yeah. is, is there an advantage or is it just a disadvantage? No, no, it's neither. It, it depends on where you are in your career and what you want out of your life. And there's been a lot of conversation about millennials but uh, in, in the last few days, but I find that millennials are very willing to, to come to Raleigh and check out the experience. They actually get to come into a smaller, this is one of the, the advantages of being a smaller company, and particularly a smaller company in Raleigh, 
is you can come in and you're you're one thirty fifth of a company. Yep. You are. I don't care if you're right out of school. We look at you and say, what do you think? You get to talk to clients. You are. You know, you're, day one, you're talking to clients. Yep. All creative people at, at any level are are presenting their own work. Everyone's talking to clients. The clients rely on us. They rely on the the youngest to the most senior people. So. George, what's your pitch for people to come to, to Fort Worth? Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of funny. If you asked me this question a year and a half ago, I would have told you it would be difficult for us to be able to attract talent. I think we are lucky being in Dallas, Fort Worth area. I mean, we are a Fort Worth agency. We'd be a part of the Metroplex, which has six million people. And I feel, compared to Raleigh, we do have a lot of advantage. I mean, Texas has one of the lowest cost of living. The county we are in is one of the fastest growing counties in the United States. No we income tax. No income tax, right, which is a great place to start a business. And what's changed over the last year and a half and why I would say I would change my answer is we're not only getting people from the surrounding areas and colleges applying, but we're seeing people from big agencies, small agencies from Boston or LA or New York wanting to move to Texas because the quality of life and the quality of being able to like, raise a family is changing. So actually some of our newest hires are people moving from the bigger cities where there is city tax, metro tax, state tax, moving to Texas where you can afford giant homes for you know, a fraction of the cost somewhere else. So that's a really good value opportunity. The other thing that we've done to augment it, and David and I had coffee this morning, we talked about this, we pretty much have the same benefit as, as most of the holding companies. So as a small agency and a new dad, one of the things I'm proud of, we offer 12 weeks full paid maternity leave. For a, you know, for a female employees and three weeks paid maternity leave for a male employees. Our in, we cover most of the insurance costs. We help them with 401k. We bring financial advisors. So we try to give this thing to our employees because we treat them as fa family members, as David alluded. Mm -hmm. so. so David, what's the downside? Um, it sounds too cheery. Well, <laughs> I, realized, I, I realized that you're lobbing me a softball about how awesome Raleigh is. Raleigh is amazing. It's an amazing place to live. Um, okay. And it's I'll take your word for it. No, it's, it's, ex <laughs> it's exploding. And you can buy, you know, as George said, you can buy a, a, an acre, you can buy an acre and a, and a house, a 3,500 square foot house for the price of a, of a studio in New York. I mean, it's, it's insane what you can get, you know? Um, and it, there's all kinds of cool stuff happening there. But I, but I do think, um, I think the downside is, is the upside. I think we are our own culture, and you do come down to sort of be a part of something. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, an advantage. Um, what you're not is part of this really big community in New York City where there's 70,000 agencies and 70,000 people and everybody's, you know, we don't have that. We have some really good, we have a really good creative community. It's not necessarily an advertising creative community. There's a lot of great yeah. designers and an, an amazing food scene happening mm -hmm. there. And well, McKinney We're part there. of that. McKinney is absolutely there and in fact, um, you know, the, we're a great foil for each other for hiring. Are you, yeah, so. so are you guys, you know, really going to war over ta the, the talent that's there? No, I don't think so. I think we're both bringing it in from outside. Uh, and I think we're both supporters of each other. I, I think it's a fairly collegial relationship. So mm -hmm. um, they've never hired anybody from me, but oh, really? it could happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Um, so how about investing in, in technology? Um, I mean, you have to be a little bit choose your small companies about where you place right. your bets. Right. I mean, I know we're a small company, and so we have to be, right. you know, we don't have a big parent company, so we have to be thoughtful about right. that. Uh, talk about how you sort of wa walk through what bets to make. Yeah, so w I think that, that is the operative question, and I think that uh, into the topic is what we actually do is invest in relationships with a lot of different partners. And we've developed an ecosystem of companies that we work with over the last six years. Um, we work with a, a company called Hone that's a production uh, resource for us. It's an internal production resource along with a lot of other um, producers. We, we have developers that we, um, that we will bring in, but we don't have developers on staff. We don't, we don't carry that cost because developers don't want to spend their time doing half of the things that we do. Uh, we do. We do product development for some of our clients and th th there's no role in there for that, uh, for them. So we've, what we've done is, is, again, getting back to the ampersand, it's, it's it's about um, the way we get things done, it's about who we get them done with, and it's also about new kinds of advertising that we can do, mm -hmm. uh, and new kinds of work we can do. So we, we've tried to sort of minimize internal investment and actually create partnerships. Yeah, George, how about you? I think for us, is 
we are kind of on the other part of the spectrum because technology is deeper ingrained with what we do. So we have no options. We have to invest in technology. But what's changed over the last five years, really two things. One is the growth of cloud computing like Amazon, Google, Microsoft. It's a lot easier to be able to get high computing servers to be able to do development. So early on when I started PMG, some of the first hires I did were pro developers, architect, uh, project managers, not to build a website and do that type of development, but more to align it as a part of the account services. My learning was at the previous agency, we did not have a lot of technology resources. I mean, I was it, and I'm not a developer. And so really aligning development as a part of the account services, one of the first thing that we did, we did and utilizing tools like Amazon. You know, five years ago, I used to hire journalists and writers to run paid search, SEO, social. Now I'm hiring mathematicians, statisticians, developer, computer science. So technology from that aspect is something that's definitely changed. On the other thing is similar to what David said, we work with some great partners. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and really have this thing like, oh my God, we have the most amazing reporting suite or the most amazing paid search tool or social tool or programmatic tool, we work with best of breed technologies and ad tech technologies that are out there to be able to close the gap. So we constantly evaluate what are good technologies to use and what are not good technologies to use. So similar to your article that you guys wrote about for every one technology that's kind of tech company that's coming up, one and a half tech companies are starting. Yeah. I mean, the growth of ad tech has been so massive that instead of trying to not only build a product but maintain it, it's a lot easier to work with a lot of our technology partners, some of them that are here, and really let them worry about that and just worry on the customer service mm -hmm. and being an agency. Yeah. David, do you aspire to be a large agency? No, um, we don't. We aspire to be a great agency. Okay. Um, and, and that is really where we put our, our focus. It's, it's the reason that... Can you be a great agency and a large agency, do you think? Absolutely. I, I do. I, the, Crispin's great, and Droga's great, and they've become big. Um, Wyden, is, I mean, it's a, net, it's a worldwide network that produces mm -hmm. absolutely amazing work. So, um, But for, you, you could argue that they're the exceptions to the rule. That in a, usually, yeah. you know, it's... I, I, I don't know. A lot of times it's agencies. How big can we get before we suck? Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't talk about it that way. Uh, we really don't. I, <laughs> Wonder why? <laughs> well, I, it just I think um, we're our our operating principle again, getting back to sort of values of what of what we value. We feel like if we do the work, everything else takes care of itself. And how can we stay really nimble mm -hmm. as things change? We're not going to know what's happening right now until we look back in five years. But do you worry? Do you worry at all that that the company you know as you grow will become something? different from what you know you started as? I don't. I think that actually could be an advantage. I think it's already happened. Um, because it, it, ad, what is advertising anymore? What it, what it, there's more advertising than there's ever been. And yet the business model seems to be constricting. So um, I think that could be at our advantage as being small and nimble, that we, we can kind of go places that bigger companies have to make huge investments to do. We don't have to do that. We can find partners. Um, again, if you meet a client at their need and you're agnostic about how you solve that problem, it, it sort of opens the world to you um, a little bit. So th that's just how we look at it. And Do so you think you could be the kind of agency that you want to be within a holding company? I don't know, actually. I've been part of a holding company, and, uh, and, I, and, and I left it. So I don't know. I, I think you probably can, but I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. George, how was that for an answer? That was kind of a non-answer. Thank you. Uh, Running for George. Congress. <laughs> George. I was like, I, well, it's funny, because like every single agency that's not part of a holding company is like, oh, the holding companies are dinosaurs. And then all of a sudden, they get bought by mm -hmm. a holding company. And I sort of remind them. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 we were talking about other holding companies, not this one. <laughs> uh, George, what's the goal? So I was like, please don't ask me that question. Um, <laughs> it's to get bought by WPP. No. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I've had a great experience being part of the holding company, but fr from my personal experience outside of being a member of the team than running an agency. I think being smaller and nimble is something we kind of strive for. It. And I, I've seen some models of where agency, to your point, could be great. There are far and few between being part of the holding uh, a company. But for us, is we can't, our biggest kind of compass to make sure we're doing the right thing is our culture. And so we always see, like, are we getting too big? And for me, my personal measuring stick and every member of our company has a different thing. It's like I want to know each individual person that works at PMG, who they are, what their hobbies, who's their family, what's their aspiration, this whole family type of dynamics. Because some of well, the you're not going to be able to do that. You're at 65. When you're 100 people, there's no way you're I know. There's know. some people that, that are here from PMG, and you can ask them. I, I, I think I'm 
still pretty good about managing that. At, at some point, that might went away, and maybe at some point I say we stay at 65 or 70 people, and if we lose that capability. So for me, that's my personal measuring stick. I might need to rethink that strategy. If we want to continue to grow, maybe we say we have the privilege to work with some great brands, work on some amazing campaigns. Maybe this is the size that we stay with. Yeah. To David's point, it changes. If you asked me two years ago, I thought maybe it's 30 people, then it's 40 people. But one thing I've learned from agencies like Huge and, and some other ones, you know, work talking to their president and CEOs, they're at 80, 90 people and still been able to maintain that. So it's really it comes to the type of people you work with and doing it the right way. It's not mm -hmm. easy to do, but it's something yeah. we strive to work. So David, can you imagine the day of go, walking into the agency and you're like, who is this person? <laughs> uh, that is, I have been in that agency before. Yeah. Um, and I think Malcolm Gladwell says at 150 people, that's the max, right? I do remember the first time um, at a previous, age, at McKinney actually, years yeah. ago. I think we got up to about 250 um, at our height when I was there. And I remember seeing somebody going, I've never met you. I don't know who you are. I didn't, I didn't interview you. I don't know what position you are. That was a weird, that was a very weird feeling. So, I, but we're way, we're way away from that. And, and uh, you know, again, we're 35 people. I would love to be in the 60 range. I think that would be a great size for us in the next few years. I think okay. that would be great. Cool. Want to open it up to questions? Tanya has a microphone. Oh, Shereen? Um, yeah. Um, I'm curious about, I think when agencies walk into a room, especially during a competitive pitch process, I think small agencies often may feel like they're at a d disadvantage just because of pure scale. I mean, how do you communicate that to a prospective client? And then later on, do you guys think you're better at managing to not get fired, basically, because of your size? That's a great question. And actually, it's a little bit of a topic of mm -hmm. conversation yeah. this morning when we grabbed coffee. It is harder, right? For us, we, we can't just marginally win the pitch. We have to absolutely crush it because no CMO ever gets fired for hiring a holding company. We're the best digital advertising company, which usually it's most of the big agency and the holding company. So immediately we're at a huge disadvantage just because we're the smaller and we're more of a, a gamble bad. And so the way we communicate that is kind of what our value proposition is. So one of the things that we feel like we have a huge upside is the big agency. We really can align ourselves to be the, the client partner. So similar to uh, David and, and his agency, we don't pitch all the time. We take two to three clients every single year, and we don't look at them as clients, we look at them as the partners. And there is plenty of marketers that they want that. That being said, there is plenty of advertising uh, brands and marketers that actually want the opposite. They want the big holding company with a large footprint, with the ability to add more staffing and so on. So we are not a flavor for everybody, but we feel our value proposition is very unique. Hmm. So David, do you think that you have to over-deliver because yes. Yeah. every meeting with every current client, every time. And I think it's one of our strengths, is that um, we never want to be the prancing monkey who, let's see what the creative guys do. You know, that we don't ever want to be that. Um, so we come in super authentic and serious, uh, which is our culture, I think, but also, you know, with a lot of great work. But to, to that point, I will say, we, we, will, we don't pitch all the time. Um, we say no, one of the, getting back to your holding company question, we have the power to say no right now, which I think is great. But one of the things that we will do is we'll go into a new business pitch, and I have committed that if you give us this business, we will not pitch anything for six months. We will absorb mm. this business. And that's fine with me. I mean, I, I would much rather, you, you know, you have, to start, you have to start out right. And I, I've been in the, the agencies before where you win a piece of business and you're on to the next pitch. Yeah. And clients know. Is it? Uh, so I, I wonder about that. I mean, because you must be in competitive pitches with larger agencies, and you're sitting there, you're like, oh my god, yeah. these people pitching it are not going to work on the business. Yeah. Uh, it, that must be frustrating. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but you don't also, you know, you, all you can do is worry about your game. You can't worry about what else they're doing. And, and you love when a pr prospective client compares, you, like, well, you did a much better job with the strategy, but they yeah. did this whole video, which yeah. was really cool spoof on one of our commercials. So it's really a toss-up. That's usually the red flag. Maybe that's the right client to work with because they're valuing the different things. So. Yeah. True. Yeah, both of you talked about um, your strategic advantage being your nimbleness, um, being able to adapt. I mean, could you imagine uh, seeing some area of opportunity uh, from a you know a whole new space that opens up where you guys could see yourself specializing instead of it sounds like really your uh, full service solution at this point could you ever see yourselves narrowing your focus and going after a specific area or is it just you really see servicing that I guess small to medium sized client in the interim and being more of that everything that's a great question at PNG we do this quarterly so quarterly I meet with kind of our 
leadership team and we go away for a couple of days and we talk exactly about that. And if I would say we actually narrow down now, we probably have the capabilities to offer 12, 14, 15 different services. But we ask ourselves a couple of questions. One, what are we staff to do? Like, that's the one thing. Like, what are we really good at? And what value we can bring to the clients too? What are the trends that we're seeing in the industry? And then are we positioned and do we have the know-how and the knowledge to be able to do that? And three, what are the type of services that potentially we don't want to go after because that's not our core expertise or something we want to do? And so to your point, if anything, we're already getting kind of narrowed down because which area is becoming more and more sp specialized. That being said, we also live in this omni-channel, especially from a digital perspective perspective, you will be able to do, a, you need to be able to do very effective media mix modeling between social and, and search and SEO and display and branding and so on. So at some point you can narrow down, but you need, still need to be able to control some of the core channels. My answer is yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. I, David, saw the, I saw the timer. George, oh, no, sorry. thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you guys.